Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we are looking at a PowerColor Radeon HD 7750 1GB GDDR5 graphics card. This is one of AMD's new 28nm architecture cards. This product was provided by Fortacus, a great store and online shop. Thank you. But now let's move on to the box. Once again it's the PowerColor HD 7750 card which offers 1GB of GDDR5 video memory. It will be able to handle a 3 displays in iFinity. On the back of the box there basically are descriptions on how aim these features should work. And yeah, that's it for the box, which looks very nice in my opinion. Inside of the box is another one, and right on top is the graphics card protected very well. Underneath is a power color quick installation guide and the driver disc. And last but not least a DVI to VGE adapter. Now back to the card itself which is in an anti-static bag once unpackaged. Here's the card, there's the small fan which looks very nice together with the shroud design. The new 28nm cards are now using the PCI Express 3.0 interface which should allow much more bandwidth. On the other side you see it's a completely bright red PCB which looks beautiful. Here are the 4 metal screws for the heatsink and not to forget there's no AMD crossfire support since there's no finger. On the back there's room for ventilation and as you can see it's a very slim and short card so it should work with almost any case. Hopefully this card won't get too hot but we will get to that later on. It's a single slot card obviously and it offers one DVI, one HDMI and one display port output. So all in all the design of the card looks very nice. But now let's move on to the specifications. The PowerColor Radeon HD7750 graphics card has 1GB of GDDR5 memory and the codename is Cape Word Pro. It has a core clock of 800 MHz and a memory clock of 1125 MHz. Also the TDP is 55 watts in load and the card is also using the 28nm architecture. Full DirectX 11.1 support and it also has a bus width of 128 bit. Here in GPU-C you see it's a HD 7700 series card that's running. Once again brand new 28 nanometer architecture with lots of transistors. 512 unified shaders and it's a PCIe 3.0 card that now also supports DirectX 11.1 and shader mode 5.0 of course. 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory and a bus width of 128 bit. The rated bandwidth is 72 gigabyte per second, which is pretty good. Of course, at the time of this video, I got the latest drivers installed and the card is also running at stock speeds. Here's the test system I'm going to use. Now let's jump right into the benchmarks and 3D Mark Vantage is first of course at the performance preset. The GPU score is 9963, so almost 10,000 points which is pretty good. But in 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset the scores immediately look different, but still very very acceptable with 2545. This is heavy DX11 rendering by the way. In 3D Mark 6 at default settings I get 6705 points in the shader model 2.0 test and in the HDR shader model 3.0 test I get 7271 points. Great scores although that's DirectX 9 rendering. But now let's get back to DirectX 11 benchmarks like the Unigen Heaven benchmark 2.5 at 1680x1050 at maxed out extreme settings. And honestly the results don't look bad with 15.1 FPS on average, 8.4 on minimum and 31.5 FPS at max. Scores are 382. Now Unigen Sanctuary Benchmark 2.3 at 1680x1050 at highest DirectX 11 settings as well. And like almost every time I get outstanding results in this DX11 benchmark since it's very light. The average frame rate is 55.9 FPS, minimum 34.6 and at max I get 74.5 FPS. Scores are 2372. Time for some OpenGL rendering in Cinebench Release 11.5. And as you can see I got steady 60 FPS, which is more than enough. In OpenGL rendering this card even beats the GTX 560 I tested not too long ago. In Last Planet 2 benchmark at 680x1050 at highest DirectX 11 settings in test A I got 25.8 FPS and ranked C. In test B I got a little less and that's 19.8 FPS. I ranked C as well. 
In Furmark at 1280 by 720 without any anti-aliasing at benchmark no preset, this card scored 1187 points and has an average frame rate of 19 to 20 FPS, so not too bad. In Dirt 3 at 680 by 1050 on ultra high settings I get 31 FPS on average and 27 on minimum, so that's pretty good for ultra. But now let's see how this card handles ultra settings in Battlefield 3 at 680 by 1050. The average frame rate is 28 FPS, minimum 19 and at max 40. So it's almost playable, but if you want to play without any lag you should lower the settings to high and make sure you also disable the MSAA and turn down the AF to the minimum. As you can see I got beautiful 40 FPS on average now, 30 on minimum and 53 at max. So for the temperatures on idle, this card runs at 35 degrees Celsius, which are 95 degrees Fahrenheit. On load, the temperature goes all the way up to 69 degrees Celsius, which are 156 degrees Fahrenheit. My ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees Celsius, which are 70 degrees Fahrenheit when I ran the tests. So on idle, great temperature, but on load it gets a little hot, but at least the card is very very silent even when the fan is running at a high percentage. The power color Radeon HD 7751 GB GDDR5 graphics card really proved it can perform for its price and power consumption. It's a great gaming card if you're planning to save energy, since this card doesn't use a lot of it. Also it's very silent in operation and it is short and slim for smaller cases. And I have to admit the design of the card doesn't look bad at all with its bright red PCB. Pros are good price performance ratio, great overall performance, it's very silent and will fit in smaller cases. For the cons I have one or two things to say. First the higher temperatures on load but of course it's not critically at all. And for the second it's a single slot card so there could be a second DVI port but of course I don't know if it really is a con since the rest of the card is slim as well and it wouldn't make much sense being a dual slot card then. I give this product an 8 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Also once again I'd like to thank Vortecas for providing it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.